Hi there, Mikhailo is here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find and observe all 8 planets of the solar system. For this, we will need only 3 things. For this, we will need only 3 things. Your eyes, your phone or your PC and a small telescope. It's ok if you don't have the last thing, but in this case, the number of visible planets for you will decrease to 6. First things first, we need to download the free app Stellarium on our PC. This is a very convenient star map that allows you to find any celestial object really quickly. There is also a free mobile version of Stellarium on Play Store, but on Apple Store you will have to pay for it. Fortunately, there is another free app called Starwalk 2, available for iPhone owners, so you can download it. This is not an advertisement. After downloading, we open Stellarium and see here many very interesting buttons, but we will need only three of them. Using that small display below, we can travel in time and go to any year in history we want. We can even go to the year 100,000 and see what will happen. Well, very interesting. That's how the constellations are going to look in 90,000 years. The great beer looks weird. This button brings us back to the current time. If this system is not convenient for you, there is a window of date and time where you can indicate the proper day. The last button that we need is this search window. Here you can find any celestial object, including planets, galaxies and even Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster. In the mobile versions of Stellarium or Starwalk, we need to find the same buttons. Here you can indicate the necessary time and here you can search for planets. I left all links to these apps in the description, so you can check them out after the video. Before starting the observation, we need to remember a few things. First of all, don't observe in the light polluted area of your town. Try to find a dark place somewhere far from the city lights, for example in a park or your backyard. Also, you will need a compass in your phone, or you can recall from your school that the sunsets occur approximately in the west and the sunrises occur approximately in the east. By the way, if you are going to observe through your telescope and you still don't know how to use it properly, you can watch my brief guide for beginners somewhere here. And finally, we are not going to observe planets in their order from the sun, so we will start with the easiest planets for the observation. Well, I think we are ready now. And the first object on our list is Earth. What are the odds that we will be able to find this elusive planet? Well, we just need to go outside and delight some fascinating views of our homeland. Wonderful. After that, we are waiting until it gets dark enough to see the natural satellite of our planet, the Moon. The Moon is almost always discernible in the sky, so you won't have any troubles finding it. The amount of the moons that we can see changes every day, but the best lunar phases are this. They allow us to see several surface details and their brightness is just perfect. Through a small telescope, you will be able to see something like this. Now let's proceed to the next planet, which is by the way the largest in the solar system, and it also gets mad when you procrastinate. Jupiter is the third brightest object in the night sky and it's visible almost always during the year. It looks like a vivid white star and stands out among all celestial objects. Nevertheless, if you are still not sure whether it's Jupiter, you can match its surroundings with data from your sky map or wait a few days for the moon to emerge near it. And now it's time for telescope observations. Its four Galilean moons and its largest atmospheric belts are the most magnificent details of any planet in the solar system. 
And the next planet is the second brightest object in the night sky after the moon. Please meet the hottest planet in the solar system, Venus. The temperature there can reach 471 degrees Celsius, so when you see Venus next time, you will literally behold hell. Orbiting the Sun during the year, Venus emerges as the evening star, visible right after sunset, or as the morning star, visible right before sunrise. To the naked eye, Venus is extremely vivid, so it even casts shadows on surrounding objects. Before the observations, you need to inquire about its current location in Stellarium, either it is visible in the early morning or in the evening. Then you look west or east, and precisely Venus will be the brightest star visible to you. That's how Venus looks through a telescope, and it kinda reminds of the tiny moon. You will be able to see its phases, and as it orbits the sun, the phases will change. Unfortunately, the Venusian atmosphere is extremely dense and therefore impenetrable to any telescope in the world. And now it's time for quite remote and faint planets, so it's okay if you don't find them at the first attempt. Now try to guess which planet will be the next, Pluto or Saturn? <laughs> well, okay, actually it's Saturn because Pluto is not a planet. Saturn is not as notable as Jupiter, but still, it is a quite bright planet. In the night sky, Saturn seems like a yellowish star, but if you have any troubles finding it, you can wait when Saturn comes closer to the moon. If you're a fortunate owner of this optical miracle, then you will be able to witness the beauty of Saturn rings. While you're observing this enormous ball of gas, fancy the distance to it. Earth and Saturn lie approximately 1.2 billion kilometers apart. It takes light more than one hour to cover this distance. It also means that we see Saturn in the past, and it might be destroyed by a huge black hole by now. Well, of course I'm joking. Or maybe I'm not. And now let's proceed to the planet that is going to be the technological empire of Elon Musk. I am talking about Mars. Most of the time, Mars is located quite remote from Earth, and therefore it's quite faint. But every two years happens an event known as the opposition. A planet at opposition is closest to Earth and marks the best time to observe it. Mars during the opposition is the third brightest object in the night sky. Thanks to its brightness and notable reddish color, it's very easy to identify Mars. On the screen, you can see Mars oppositions that are going to occur in the coming decades. Through a telescope, you will probably be able to see its polar caps and maybe the largest surface details. Unfortunately, secret alien CIA bases on Mars are too small for our telescopes. And now let's consider the last planet in the solar system visible with the unaided eye, Mercury. Mercury is one of the most challenging planets to observe, so if you have managed to find it, you are an awesome person. Mercury, just like Venus, is discernible either after sunset or before sunrise, but due to its proximity to the sun, it's available for the observation during only one hour. Actually, Mercury is a bright planet, but again, it is located very close to the sun and all its brightness gets lost in sun rays. You will probably need more than a few minutes to find it, so binoculars or a telescope will be valuable things in this case. If you still haven't managed to find Mercury, you should wait until Venus or any other bright object approaches it. The surroundings are crucial in finding planets. Through a telescope, Mercury won't show us a lot of remarkable details. Actually, you will be very fortunate if you see at least its face. Mercury is small. Well, we ran out of planets visible with the unaided eye. To see the last two planets, namely Uranus and Neptune, you will need a telescope with an aperture of at least 60 mm or quality binoculars. Don't try to observe these planets during the full moon or when they are located close to it. The brightness of our natural satellite won't give us a chance to distinguish either Uranus or Neptune. 
Nevertheless, don't upset yourself if you can find these planets. Just a little practice and all alien bases will be visible through your telescope. I give my word. And now let's start with Uranus. Uranus is the seventh planet from the Sun and the approximate distance to it is 2.6 billion kilometers. Still, it is available for observations literally through the smallest telescopes in the world. For a start, I recommend you to stop time in Stellarium and zoom Uranus in. Explore the surroundings of this planet, count the nearest stars and imagine what geometrical figure they create together. But don't forget that almost through all telescopes you see an inverted image, so turn it upside down in your mind. There is even an easier way to find Uranus. You can wait until it approaches a bright planet or a star, like it did in this conjunction with Mars. Through a small telescope, Uranus seems like a tiny blue dot. If you have a medium-sized telescope, you can try to see its shape, but nothing more than a little, distant world. And now let's consider the last and the farthest planet in the solar system, Neptune. Neptune has the most intense sustained winds of any planet in the solar system, with recorded speeds as high as 2100 km per hour, so it's better to live rather in Kansas than on Neptune. Neptune is even fainter than Uranus, so if you find both these planets, you can name yourself the conqueror of Neptune and Uranus. Ok, let's stop. The ways to uncover Neptune are similar to those of Uranus. Wait for conjunctions with vivid celestial objects, explore the surroundings of Neptune and practice. Through any small telescope Neptune looks like a dot, because it is extremely remote from Earth, so the very fact that you have managed to find a faraway corner of the solar system should make you proud of yourself. As you see, everyone can find, identify and observe all 8 planets of the solar system. The most crucial thing is not to give up and practice more. For example, I have managed to find Uranus only after 2 days of searching. Let's summarize what you should do to succeed in finding planets. Download a sky map on your PC or phone. Inquire about the current location of planets. Find a dark place in your city. Prepare a telescope if you want to see all 8 planets. And never give up. I hope that this guide was quite helpful for you. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching very interesting videos. Bye! Well, that's strange. I feel like I forgot something. Something really important. Ah, of course. Pluto is not a planet.